Now you're ready. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, I want to make sure everyone can hear me. I want to, as we open, as people are gathering, as we uh, open, I want you to say the word remember. Uh, it has to be a lot than that. Remember. That's one of the things in the, in the Bible, how often God's people did not. Yeah, he didn't. And so today, uh, we're going to hear God's truth being spoken, read. And I'm, I'm going to begin with uh, Psalm 105, but it's on the word. When I point to you, I want you to say, remember. Okay, thank you. Okay, Psalm 105. Remember to. Remember. That's right. And the first thing is, give thanks to the Lord. Remember. Call on his name. Remember. Make known among the nations what he has done. Remember. I'll get my finger right here a little bit. Sing to him, sing praises to him. To tell of all of his wondrous, wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Now don't get out of sync here. (laughs) To let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. The wonderful things he has done. Yeah, well, we're doing both sides, but that's great. But the important thing is to to go across loud and clear to remember, 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 remember. We don't remember God's faithfulness down through. We were in Sunday school lesson today. Remember about Daniel. Oh, and then Jeremiah. And, you know, all that we we read about in the scriptures, it always comes back. To people did not Remember. to thank God, to go to God in prayer. You know, at verse 6. Verse 6 says, Remember the wonders that he has done. How often, like we were talking about, all these different tragedies and things around the world that's going on that's driving us crazy remember that God is on the throne we don't understand it but we know that there's coming a day that every action will be taken care of by our Lord amen Amen. to remember that because we just want to throw in the towel no by our own efforts we, we we can try that but the thing is it's only God that can help us Amen? Amen. Remember. Remember that he holds all things. Always has. Always will. And there's a time of coming that's going to be reckoned with by our, our, our Lord and our God Almighty. He's going, to, he's going to make things right. He's going to bring it all together. And as we continue to keep our eyes off of the wind and the waves, off of the trees and the sunshine, and keep our eyes on him, that... He's going to make all things correct. Amen? All things true. And as we gather, we gather as the redeemed of the Lord to remember what he has done and is doing and is, wants to do in and through our lives, our church, as we remember that we are his. And all God's people said, Amen. let's bow a word, word of prayer. Father in heaven, may that, that word, remember, O oh Lord, as, as we hear the message today, as we sing the songs, the words to the songs, as we, O oh Lord, uh, talk and think about and reflect on how great you are and how weak we are. And this world is in a terrible mess. It's because Jesus Christ is not on the throne. And, but one day we know, O oh Lord, as far as our lives are in your hands and we just praise you, O oh God, that we can remember Remember that you're in charge, always have been, always will be. You leave it up to us to decide, O oh Lord, what we want to do as we stand before you, even today. Help us, Lord. Help us to de- declare, remember, because 
O Lord, to remember that with you there is hope. With you there is victory. With you, O God, we ask and pray your blessing upon this time of worship as we gather in the name of Christ, as we experience the wonders of your, your love anew and afresh today. O Lord, may your anointing be upon everyone here, and may your anointing be upon, O Lord, your church throughout the world. We just thank you and praise you, O God, and we ask these blessings in the name of Christ. Amen. Remember, <laughs> at this time, let's sing. Next week, um, I think it's the 6th or 7th, we're going to be starting the uh, food program at Stadium Terrace. Yeah. And well, you're gonna want to uh, anybody, who wants, anybody who wants to uh, help with that, um, we'll take uh, one day during the week or whatever. And uh, thank you for any who help with it. And uh, it's going to help the children up in Stadium Terrace uh, and give them food. If they wanted to help, Brian, what time would they be looking to help? 12.30. 12.30 till? 1.30. 12.30 to 1.30. So if you're able to help, 12.30 to 1.30 at Stadium Terrace, right at the entranceway, they would love some help. Let uh, me or Diane know if you're interested. Thanks. As Earl said, remember, next Saturday, Brethren Workshop, 10 to 2, uh, we're going to do the boat build, and the theme's going to be in the boat with Jesus. I think we're going to start with a Bible study about Noah's Ark, but it's going to try to be boat-themed throughout. So if you want to help, or if you want to just come up and hang out and see what we do, or if you have grandkids, kids you want to bring over, bring them over, 10 to 2, <coughs> next Saturday. We just, where's we the just, Brethren Workshop at, Jen? My, my place, 36... 
Write it down. 36 Patricia Lane. Right, if you go down to the bottom of the hill and go to the right, you will get up around the first big turn. You'll see Patricia Lane. I'm down in there. So if you have any questions and want to know where it's at, just grab me. I'll give you better directions. <laughs> Almost to Earl's house, about halfway to Earl's house, I think. <laughs> We'll put it online as well. So, Jeff, we can just bring and drop kids off at your house is what you're saying. Yeah, well, you might not get them back. <laughs> <laughs> you're just making that offer more enticing. Just kidding, just kidding. Uh, we do have a couple more announcements here. Uh, baby bottles are in a box right over there. If you're interested, this is for Precious Life. We're still collecting these for the next couple weeks. So if you're interested in helping with that, we'd love that with uh, to help with that. We do have another uh, monthly investment chart uh, starting next uh next this next week coming up so we're gonna pass this around and hand it to brian you can send it around that direction uh if you're interested and able to help we would greatly appreciate any of those things and um to do with that uh we do have some other things tomorrow uh due to memorial day there will not be monday night bible study or or passing out of, of things tuesday we are at stadium terrace uh for our games and uh food and those kind of things if you're interested in helping us uh, let us know um Summer stuff is coming up uh, for the youth. It's in the newsletter. There are new newsletters for June right on this table. You're just going to grab one on your way out. That'd be great uh, with some birthdays and those kind of things. Um, are there visitors or birthdays that would like to raise their hand that we can give, give treats to? I would go and snag them here. I know his dad is not raising his hand. I got in trouble for not calling him out last week, or, or the first service. So dad has one coming up. So does Esri and Larkspur. Anyone else? Okay. Um, also, uh, anyone's interested in, uh, JCS graduation in Emmanuel this Friday night, uh, as it starts at seven, it's a great opportunity for service, uh, to be part of that next Sunday is graduation Sunday. And so, um, if it, we have some people we listed there, the people that, that people had told us about, if you don't tell us, then we don't know, and then we'll feel sad, but, um, please let us know. And that way we can and, and honor them and, and celebrate them as well. Okay. Um, uh, at this point, we'll do the offering. Um, are, they, are they passing plates? Or are they just doing that? Just that. Just that. Okay. Sorry. You, you told me otherwise. Okay. <laughs> so we will not do that. Uh, the offering is here. Please do put your offering in there. And uh, with that, any praises or prayer requests? Pray for all those families that lost children. The families that lost children. Amen. In Texas. Yeah. I know a couple of people with, with surgeries coming up this week and whatnot. Um, continue to pray for them. Just remember all the veterans this Memorial Day that had lost their lives, you know, that we can have freedom in our country. Yeah, Th those that, have, that sacrificed, yes, and those of people that are still here and, and families that are still here that have lost loved ones um, due to that, yeah. Ah, so the new adventures that are going on there, and and the adventures. Speaking of graduation, on Friday. Uh huh. She's moving out Saturday. <laughs> That's. Hey, you know where you should take her? Take her to Jeff's house. <laughs> you can leave her there. I hear forever is what she'll, I. She'll, she'll learn to make a boat. She'll learn to make a boat. <laughs> She'll, she'll float or sink either way. <laughs> Something's going to happen. There we go. Okay. Um, okay, let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for beautiful weather, for opportunities we have, dear Lord, to be close to you. I thank you for how much you love us and how you care for us. I thank you, dear Lord, how you have given us so many good and perfect gifts. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. We thank you, God, that we can give back to you a portion uh, of, of what is already yours. Dear Lord, I ask that you would just continue to help to multiply uh, the gifts and, and, and the monies and the time, dear Lord, in all that is given to you. I ask that you multiply it, that it might do what you need it to do in this, in this community. I thank you, dear Lord, Vacation Bible School is coming up in a very obvious way that we try to minister to those around us. We ask that you'd help prepare us, prepare the kids, prepare the families, prepare all the things, dear Lord, that go into it. I thank you that just in a couple weeks, dear Lord, we're going to be, this is, this is going to be teeming and just lots and lots of kids here. I ask God that you would just change hearts. I thank you, God, that you desire to have a relationship with us, and I ask that you'd help us 
um, to, to be your light in this place. Be with those that have, have surgeries and things coming up that you would just uh, give them strength, give the doctors wisdom. Thank you, God, for how you, uh, how you help and, and, uh, and the plans you have for us. Be with all those that are missing loved ones, dear Lord, and, 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 and the sorrow that we can have for, for the loss of life. And, and we ask, God, that you would um, provide comfort and peace, dear Lord, in this time. Thank you, dear Lord, for this church, and just bless the rest of the service now as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If the kids would come forward, I will do a children's story. I see two coming this way. Good. Uh, small children coming from down there. Any other small children? Good. Oh, here's some more. Yeah, you don't have to sit. Just kind of, yes, kind of hunker. Hunker is what they used to tell me is what it was called. I don't know. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Okay, you guys can sit right there on the in the on the bench right there. They're like, actually, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so and we're sitting right there. That's fine too. Just don't bump the cord. Okay, so boys and girls, um, you know how when you know somebody, there's some people that know other people better than others, right? There's some people that are like best friends and have been best friends for a long time. Okay. You have one? That's good. And it's good to know people. And sometimes you know people a little bit, some people you know, uh, uh, more, and some people you know people a lot, lot, lot. Well, Esri, Esri's not here, so I'll talk about him. Esri has several people that he love, 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 loves. Okay? And one of them is Brian Mailer. And so when he sees a car that looks like Brian Mailer's, guess what he says? Brian! Brian, we were up at Ollie's the other day, and he saw a car that looked exactly like Brian Mailer's, and he said, we have to stop that. Stop that, that, stop! To see Brian. It was not Brian's car. I knew where Brian was. It was He was not there. And we were not hunting for Brian in Ollie's anyway. But he knew by the car, hey, that's that's someone I care about. Larkspur, it, yesterday we pulled into Mom and Dad's driveway and Lark looked over and said, Pappy's car! Yay! And I said, yay. That's right. Yay. Because they know them. Sometimes you know people, if you see someone kind of walking across the stadium or something, you can't see the front of their face, but you know by that walk, oh, I know them, I know who that is, right? Or maybe they're talking, their voice is talking, you hear them and you say, oh, wait a second here, where are they? What's going on there, right? Little kids, parents seem to know where, the, where their little kid that's crying, they're like, oh, that's mine, that's mine. Yeah. Or the little kids are like, my mom, I heard her somewhere here, I will find her. God wants to know us. He, well, he knows us that well. He wants us to know him that well. That when we hear a sound, there's a voice, or God saying, hey, you should go help this person, that we know, wait a second, that's not just me talking, that's God telling me something. He wants us to be that close to him that we know, oh, wait a second, that's God talking to us. How do we get to know God that well? Now think about that for a sec. How does Ezri know Brian? How does he know? Yeah. They're friends. So they spend time together? Yeah. When Brian calls, he, Ezra always says, da, 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 phone, phone. And I'll give him the phone and he'll tell Brian stories. Stories and stories. Right, Brian? Yeah. He wants to talk to Brian every time. He knows, he knows because of time spent together. And so when we want to get close to God, guess what God says? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to get, I'd love to have you. I want you to be my friend. God wants for you to be his good friend. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, help us to want to be your good friend. Help us to want to know who you are and what you do and where you go and how you act. Help us, dear Lord, to want to hear your voice. I thank you, God, that we can spend more time and that the boys and girls right here right now are spending more time with you. Help their relationship to go closer to you today. In your name we pray. Amen. If you go over here, you guys can give you some candy here. And the junior church will go inside then as well. If uh, the rest of you will stand, if you're able, and sing with us. Just a closer walk with thee. Are we going Where's the candy at? Right, right there. Yes, we're going inside.
<laughs> Good. <laughs> you good? Sounds good. Okay. Oh, I need a Bible. Uh, some Bible I can borrow? That is one. Well, if you weren't awake, awake before, you should be awake now. That's a wake-up call. <laughs> a little noise there, wake us up there. Um, I do want to mention before I, I, I share the scripture and, and the message, I do want to mention that as Vacation Bible School is coming up, and since we sent a lot of the kids out already, um, one of the goals we have is for the story room to be decorated every day for the different scenes. Okay, so things we're going to need are like if you have any fishing nets, that'd be helpful for the days that are on fishing stuff. Um, if you have uh, some things that make it look like a Middle Eastern type thing, because the, uh, the stories all take place in Bible times, you know. So um, one day will be about a banquet, one day will be about the feeding of the 5,000. So we could use some plants, things like that. However, we don't want you to send your best stuff necessarily because there'll be hundreds of kids walking by it, maybe touching it. So, if you have some of that stuff and you want to send it, um, talk to Diane or, or us and we'll help you out with that too then. Okay. The Last Supper is one of the days. Things like that. Oh, and I thought it would be neat one of the days to have um, a sto like a stone fireplace with a fake fire on the inside. Not a real fire because it's inside the church, but a fake one I thought would be good because that, that's the whole cooking of uh, the fish outside like that. Okay, we are in Revelation, chapter 10. I'll pray. Dear God, I ask you to open up our ears that we might hear your word. Come and teach us, Lord, that we might encounter you and be changed by you. I ask you, Lord, to teach me, to teach all of us. Be the master teacher, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the truth that you've brought us here to hear and that you prepared for us, and uh, help us to come across and help us to understand it and put it into practice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Revelation 10. Then I saw another mighty angel. Okay, so, so chapter 9 was the first six trumpet calls that went out. Okay, that chapter 9. The seventh trumpet will be in chapter 11. There's kind of like an interlude that's happening in the meantime. Okay, so chapter 10. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was robed in the cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun. His legs were like fiery pillars. He was holding a little scroll which lay open in his hands. He planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land and gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. And when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to, what the seven, when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write. But I heard a voice from heaven say, seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. My brother Jonathan has a good friend named Adam. And they started kindergarten together, and they went, they're still friends today. They played music gigs together. A lot of you have heard Jonathan, probably heard jo Adam on his bass playing alongside. They recorded stuff. They've been good friends. Lots of adventures they've done. Um, they're really good friends. And one of the ways I saw that friendship was when they were about, in, I think it was maybe fifth or sixth grade, they made up their own language. Uh, it, it was a written down language. It was called the language of the Unai. I don't know why I picked that word, but it's the language of the Unai. And he had a, it was a very elaborate language they came up with uh, to communicate with each other. And I, I, I got John to teach me a couple words of it, but he wouldn't tell me the whole thing because I was not the friend. They were close. They were close. When I see that closeness between John and Adam, they're still friends today, and, and uh, I think the families still get together and such. But when I see that closeness there, I think about the closeness of this passage between Jesus and John. But I heard a voice from heaven say, Seal up what the seven thunders have said, and do not write it down. Jesus allowed John to hear what those seven thunders said. 
And then he said, don't share it. Don't write it down. He wanted, he, what, Jesus wanted John to know what they said. And you see, th th that's close to say, this is what I'm doing, John. I want you to experience it. I want you to hear it. Um, that's the same kind of closeness we see throughout Scripture. Adam and Eve, remember God would walk with them in the garden before the sin? They would walk together, fellowship with one another. Or Enoch, Enoch walked faithfully with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. Enoch didn't die. It's just he walked with God faithfully and God just pulled him out. Moses, of whom God said, I speak to him face to face, clearly, and not in riddles. He sees the Lord as he is. So why are you not afraid to criticize my servant Moses? Or Shavrik, Meshach, and Abednego, whenever they were in the fiery furnace, and there was Jesus walking with them in the furnace. Paul in 2 Corinthians says he knew of a man who was caught up to paradise and heard un inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. Throughout Scripture, we see God inviting individuals to a close, personal relationship. An intimate relationship with him. A deeper relationship than we can imagine. And this closeness, Paul teaches in Philippians, is, is, is greater than anything else. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and, particip and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attain to the resurrection from the dead. Paul was going through. He said, I have had this experience. I have this background. This is my accomplishments. This is what I've lived my life for. He said, it's all garbage if I could just know Christ. That is what makes life worth living. Nothing else matters if you can just know Christ. It's what we were made to do. Remember the story I told a number of years ago? I think it happened in 2007. There were Korean um, missionaries who went to Afghanistan, and they were going between Kabul and one of the other cities there, and they were helping out with doctors, and they were helping out with teachers. And, um, and they were captured by the Taliban. You remember this story? And as they were captured by the Taliban, um, they were there 40 days in prison. They killed two of them. They let the others go. What I found remarkable is um, Francis Chan shared talking to some of the pastors and stuff. Um, that, that, that afterwards, the perspective of those who had been captured, um, they said, Pastor, don't you wish we were still imprisoned by the Taliban? When I was surrounded by those, these soldiers, I felt the presence of Jesus in there with me. Now that we are back in Seoul, I am, I am trying to experience that intimacy with him, but I can't. I fast and I pray and I don't feel it. I would rather be back there because of the intimacy I had with him. Knowing Jesus, knowing him closely, this is not an optional thing. This is what makes life worth living. This is what it means to be a disciple. That's why Stephen didn't care that he was in the Sanhedrin and they're getting angry and screaming at him and plugging their ears and we're about to go out and stone him. He didn't care. Instead, he says, look, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Life and death didn't matter. Pain and pleasure didn't matter. He saw Jesus. He had a moment with Jesus and nothing else mattered. And you see that in how Stephen dies in just a couple of verses later. His last words were, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And then he fell asleep. Stephen freely forgives. He walks into the presence of God. This whole world, all the pain, all the suffering just grows dim in the presence of Jesus. This is what it means to know him. And here's the thing. It's a calling of intimacy that Jesus invites 
all his disciples into. John 15 says this, No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from the Father I have made known to you. And you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. In other words, Jesus is saying, true disciples become friends with him. True disciples are invited to that deeper, closer walk with God where they know God and they are known by God. This is the narrow path to the narrow gate. A deep relationship with Jesus that he invites you to today. When John experienced this invitation, seal up what the seven thunders have said, and do not write it down, it was an honor. A tremendous honor. Jesus is saying, I trust you, John. Jesus is saying, I want to reveal this to you, John. Jesus is saying, I trust you to obey me, John. Jesus is showing how much he's invested in John. It should be an honor that we seek after as well. We should want to hear the invitation of Jesus this morning more than anything else. It should be our greatest desire to know him, to walk with him, to be known by him. We should not be willing to settle for anything less. Make no mistake, if God calls me to go and do ministry, I'm gone. I don't care where it is or what it is. If you tell me to do it, forget it. (laughs) I want to hear from Jesus. That's what his disciples do. We hear and we obey what he calls us to do. This should be our calling as disciples. Let's look at this passage together in Revelation and see how it shows us about the invitation of Jesus to go deeper. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. We have a messenger coming down. Now, if you remember back in chapter 1, we talked about that word angelos. I was kind of review it a little bit in case you forgot. Okay. The word angelos for angel, um, it doesn't just mean angel. It literally means messenger. Okay, so it's used in a lot of different contexts. Generally, it's a messenger from God, so that's an angel, okay? But even in the New Testament, it's used multiple ways. Like John the Baptist is called a messenger that was sent out. Jesus calls him that, right? That was the messenger that was sent before him. Whenever John's disciples come and talk to Jesus, they talk about the messengers from John. The angelos, as you could translate angels, you want to, but the messenger, human messengers from John to go and say, Jesus, are you the one? Or should we wait for someone else? When Jesus sends out his disciples into Samaria, he sends out them as messengers, as angelos. So this word means, is defined by being a messenger, being sent out. And that's important because we, we should look at the context then and see who is being sent out. What does it mean? Oh, wait. <laughs> so let's look at the context. He was, this messenger is robed in a cloud. Now, isn't that exactly how Jesus went up to heaven, right? When the cloud came, it said, he was taken up before their very eyes, and the cloud hid them from their sight. The messenger had a rainbow above his head. That's what we talked about back in Revelation 4 in the throne room of God. We said there's a rainbow like an emerald around the throne room of God. That throne that is shared by the Father and the Lamb who is in the midst of it. His face was like the sun. His legs were like fiery pillars. This is how Jesus appeared to John in Revelation. His feet are like pillars of fire. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. And finally, this messenger comes and puts one leg on the, on the ground and one leg on the water, showing, I own it all. That's exactly what we hear Jesus saying in Matthew 28. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. This is showing us Jesus is the messenger. And that's important to remember because Jesus is not only our Savior and the Son of God and equal with God, but Jesus is a messenger. And if we want to be close to Jesus, we must bear that message well also. In John 5.30, Jesus says, I could do nothing on my own. I judge as, as God tells me. Therefore, my judgment is just because I carry out the will of the one who sent me, not my own will. 
In other words, Jesus gladly humbles himself to be a messenger from the Father. And if we want to be close to Jesus, we also must humble ourselves to be a messenger from, from God. Now make no mistake, the goal, you're being sent by God. In life, lots of people are going to try to send you with what they think you should be doing. <laughs> I do all the you should do this, Nathan. You should. No, no, we listen for the master what we should be doing. Being close to Jesus means being his messenger. 2 Corinthians 5.20 We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. In my life, some of the greatest intimacy moments I've had with God is whenever I, I just open my mouth and he spills his words out. And the, the time that came to mind when I was preaching this morning was, um, I was like 14 years old or 15, and I went to a Church of the Brethren conf uh, kids conference of some sort, and they weren't much better than they were today. You know? And uh, I remember standing around with other 14 and 15 year olds, and them looking at me and saying, you mean to tell us, Nathan, you believe the word of God is all true? So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I've studied a lot since then. I still, I think, even more now. <laughs> but, um, and, and they said, well, can we ask you all of our questions about it? I said, sure. <laughs> sure. So I, and I remember that they would, they would come with, what about this and this? And what about this scripture there? What about this? And I remember I sat back and I just said, well, and I'd open my mouth and God would just spit the answer out. And they're like, oh, that makes sense. I'm like, yeah, it does. I never thought of that before I said that. I had no idea. And it was one of those moments I've experienced so many times since then where if you want to belong to Jesus, if you want to be close to him, you got to give him this, your mouth. It's got to be his message that's planted in you that comes out of you. It can't be your message. It can't be someone else's message. It's got to be his message. And if you are able to share that and there's nothing like it at all, suddenly you see a closeness with God that you've never seen before. And the cool thing is he wants to use you. He wants to use you for this. Do you want to be close to Jesus? Surrender your mouth to say what he wants. He was holding a little scroll, the scripture says, which lay open in his hands. The next image we have is Jesus is holding this little scroll. It's a differentiate between the scroll that was earlier. It wasn't defined as little. Okay, and it's open. Remember the scroll we talked about in chapters, oh, I think five and six? With the, the, it was a sealed scroll written on the front and back. And the lamb was the only one that could open that scroll. Remember all these sermons? You remember these, okay. And so this is a different one. That one had to be opened and revealed. This one here is little and it's already open. It's showing us that which is already revealed by God. You want to be close to Jesus? It starts with what he's already revealed you should be doing. That's where you start. So many times in life we sit back and we say, um, Lord, show me the next thing to do. And God's like, I already told you what to do. <laughs> Obey the first thing I told you, then we'll do something else. Sometimes in my life, I'm, 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 what, what should I do next? I just listen and God's like, well, I already told you, Nathan. Obey the first thing. Be faithful and little, then I'll give you more. I, I, I think about, uh, you've heard that story before about the businessman who told, told, told Mark Twain, before I die, I intend to make a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. I want to climb up Mount Sinai and read the Ten Commandments from there. And Mark Twain, with his sarcastic wit, said, uh, why don't you stay in Boston and keep the Ten Commandments? <laughs> so many times we want something beyond where we're at now. Reminds me of Naaman. Remember when Naaman came to the prophet and said, hey, I have leprosy. I heard you can heal me. What should I do? And the prophet doesn't even come outside to meet him. He sends a servant out and says, go and bathe in the Jordan, uh, uh, bathe in the, in, in the river here um, in, in Israel. Go and bathe in the river and, um, and seven times. And Naaman goes away upset, saying, I'm not going to do that. We have cleaner rivers back at home. And his servant says, if he had asked you to do a big thing, wouldn't you do it? Naaman says, yeah. Then why don't you obey in the small things? And so in humility, Naaman did what he was already told to do. And he gets out in the water, and the seventh time he comes down, it comes up, and the leprosy is completely gone. What has God been telling you to do already? So many times we won't be witnesses to the ends of the earth, but we haven't been faithful in being witnesses in Jerusalem, 
which is our town, <laughs> Judea and Samaria, which is the counties around us. Being close to Jesus means obeying what he has told us to do. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. I think right now I'm at about a half a mile obedience. In other words, I'll be driving down the road and God will say, hey, talk to that hitchhiker. <laughs> or hey, help that person in the yard. Or hey, and it takes me a half of hour of complaining and negotiating with God before I turn around to go back. <laughs> I want to be a quarter mile. I'd like to be instant, but right now I'm about a half mile. I notice that God will say, do this, and I'll get about a half mile off the road, and I'm like, okay, I'll go back, and then I go back, and things like that. And so um, the, the, the idea is, is we, need, we need the Holy Spirit to be a brake controller in our car. First time I saw a brake controller, for those people that know those, uh, it's a little thing that just controls the the brakes in the trailer behind you. I remember I was with Mike Roos, and I said, what's that thing? And it was numbers and all that stuff. And he told me what it was. Well, I, the first time I used one was this week. I was towing something. And it was, um, and it, 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 it makes a big difference. If you have a brake control, you use the brakes on, on the trailer as opposed to just the ones in your car. Otherwise, it's a big, heavy load trying to come to a stop. And sometimes we have our own desires and our own plans and our own schedule or obligations, what other people told us we should be doing, and we just keep going and doing that. And we need that Holy Spirit to be there saying, what have I told you to do? To be that brake controller. Put the brakes on. Put all that aside. What am I asking you to do? How are you called to be faithful to me? The scripture continues. He gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. And when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write. But I heard a voice from heaven saying, seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. Two actions here. Hear and obey. If you notice, um, Jesus is speaking, it sounds like a lion. That makes sense? Jesus is the lion of Judah. Okay? And that also makes sense because that's how God talks. God is not quiet. He is loud. He roars. He lets you know what he wants you to do. He doesn't leave you in suspense. The problem is, I, I, I think that we have what my dad used to say was selective hearing. And that he would say, Nathan, go do this. And I would hear him, but because I really didn't want to do it, <laughs> I wouldn't remember it. I wasn't really listening. He'd say, Nathan, you heard me, but there was selective hearing. And so many times, we're not willing to listen because we've already told God no so many times in these areas, or my will and what I want, that we don't hear his voice coming through like a lion, like it is. Great example of this is that prank I heard some of the wives playing on their husbands, where um, they'll, they'll call out to their husband and say, hey, can you help me, honey? Don't move at all. I didn't hear you, honey. I didn't hear you. So that on the computer, they'll play that da -da -dun, da -da -dun, da -da -dun, da football music, you know? And they watch the husband sprint across the house to get to the TV, only to realize it's off. Selective hearing is the same set of us. Hearing and obey. If we want to hear God clearly, we need to determine before we start listening, we will obey no matter what God asks. You have to go into it saying, okay, God, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Now, what would you have me do? That's that faith it talks about whenever it says in James, it says, whenever, you, you, when, if you, any of you lacks wisdom, he must ask God who gives freely to all without finding fault. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. For he who doubts is like a wave of sea blown and tossed by the winds. Some of that doubting is, is just me sitting back saying, does God really have the right answer? I'm not really going to obey God anyways with this, right? I'm going to do what I want to do anyways. You're not asking God for wisdom there. If you're asking God what to do, you sit back and say, God, what would you have me do and be ready to do it? That's what the hearing and obeying is about. Remember whenever Mary was with Jesus in the wedding in Cana? And, and, and she said to the servant, she said, follow him and do whatever he asks you to do. That's the kind of hearing and obedience we need. That's where God intervenes. You say, Lord, because if you sit back and say, Lord, I'll obey you, but you can only ask me for this, this, and this, guess what? You're not going to hear God very well. You're not going to walk with him. 
You need to go in and say, God, I will obey you no matter what you say. And that willingness to start out. And it's hard, but I'm telling you what, that's when you hear that lion roaring. <laughs> and he's been roaring the whole time, letting you know. You just have to go in with that humility. What would you have me say, God? What would you have me do? I will do whatever it is. And that openness with it. The challenge. There's three steps I see here for growing closer to Jesus. The first is we got to get broken. We got to get that pride out of there. That pride, the agenda. And sometimes that looks like obligations to others. Well, they expect me to do it. That's nothing to do with it. You belong to Jesus. What would God have you do? That's the question. I want to know you, Jesus. That's all that matters. Psalms 51, 17 says, The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken, repentant heart, O God. If you want to grow close to God, it starts with brokenness. You think about brokenness, it's the idea of a, you know, a horse that's broken, right? The stallion doesn't want to obey. It just keeps bucking and trying to throw off, as opposed to the broken horse. The one that is ready to be nudged by whatever the, whatever the rider wants. That's the brokenness we come to God. Okay, God, my, my way has not worked. <laughs> what would you like to do? I'm ready to go with whatever your nudge is. That's how you start getting close to Jesus. It's coming like a kid. There's a reason why Jesus said you must be like a child to come to him, to enter the kingdom of heaven. A few things sweeter than the four-year-old who wakes up in the middle of the night and comes to visit me. Now, you guys know me. You know I'm, I, I tend to work in the middle of the night many times, writing stuff and, 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 and researching and working and stuff. And many times, one or two in the morning, I'll hear the... And I'm like, oh, what? I bet there's a kid coming down. And right now, Theo's my four-year-old, so he'll just come down, rub his eyes, Daddy, <laughs> and he just wants to be held for a minute, maybe get a drink of water, and carry him back up and put him in his bed, and he falls asleep. But just as he just wants to be with me. He'll search the whole house looking for me. It's that humility, that brokenness, that I will only be fulfilled with you, Jesus. And make no mistake, there's a lot of things that's competing to fulfill you. Relationship with others, you say, this is what's, no, it's not. Obligations, positions, success, none of these things matter compared to knowing Jesus and walking with him. That's why we fast, right? Because that constant eating, I fill myself up as opposed to I stop eating for a day or maybe a, a day and a half or two days. I stop eating and I get filled up saying, God, you are the one that fills me up. I need your daily bread, not my own. Is this the relationship we have with Jesus? Hebrews 4.16 says, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. If we want to, be like, if we want to know Jesus, you got to come to us as a kid. Okay, Daddy, pick me up. Show me the next thing. I will obey. And that willingness. you got to get that pride out of there and the obligations of others with there. It's pretty neat. If, if you went and you told my kid he needs to do that, um, he's going to look at me first and say, see if I agree or not. Because he knows that I'm the one that's his dad. Do we do the same thing with God? You should do this. Well, let, let, let's see what God says about this. Second thing. So become broken. Second thing. Be faithful with little. Jesus said the one who is faithful in the very little is also faithful in much. The one who is dishonest in the very little is also dishonest in much. If you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? We need to ask ourselves here, what is the next thing God wants me to do? And most of the time it's a small thing. It's a small thing. In, in the last service it was, um, where it, and of course, 8 o'clock service is a little tricky because Sunday school class starts at 9. <laughs> and we have helpers and teachers in the 8 o'clock service. Okay, that's a way you can be involved in Sunday school. You come for the 8 o'clock and then help out with the other ones. So I tried to get it done by 9 o'clock, but it was like we started singing at like 5 till, I think it was, Dad. And so in about five minutes, I heard God clearly say, Nathan, go get the anointing oil. The anointing oil. Do an anointing this morning. And I'm thinking, okay, Lord, but we don't have time for it. We don't have. And God says, are you going to obey me or not? Okay, I'm going. 
So I said, hey, I'm going to get anointing oil. I'll be right back. And, 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 and God had some anointing he wanted that this morning. And we do have, a, we will be doing anointing here in a little bit if you want to be anointing. To know Jesus better as well as for the other things. Um, so, so the question is, what is the next right thing God has asked me to do? Normally he's been telling us, but we've been fighting him. They might seem to be small or insignificant. But if we are faithful and small, he gives us greater. And this is the real challenge, is that it seems most Christians just remain in that small. You're not willing to give that up. You're not willing to surrender it. We're not willing to, and so we never grow. And you can be a Christian for 50 years. And what happens is, is, is over time, that small just kind of dissipates. I've watched many faiths be shipwrecked over little things. Not willing to surrender working with kids or praying for kids. Not willing to surrender giving my finances. Do we understand that our, with inflation, our money is worth less every year? I mean, it's, it's really not worth holding on to if God says to give it away. I mean, it's literally worth less. Or, 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 or to sit back and be a part of a Bible study. Whatever God's asking you to do, it seems small and insignificant, and yet he does much with it if we're willing to surrender it. The question is this, what is God asking you to do next? Sometimes folks come to me and they'll say, well, um, God wants me to do this. And my first question is, make sure it's scriptural. If it's a scriptural idea, I say, okay, how can I help you? <laughs> if it's not a scriptural idea, I say, that's not scriptural, something's wrong with it. You need to look at the scripture again. But you're not responsible to me. I'm not responsible. We're responsible to God as what we should be doing or shouldn't be doing. That's the way the church works. So humble ourselves or, or um, what's, it, what's the wording I use for it? Um, <laughs> so the first one was become broken. Second one, be faithful with little. The last one is carry his message. One of the things he's already asked you to do is to carry his message in his name. Are you going? Are you going where he sends you? Have we, we have been commissioned for a heavy work. Are we doing it? What message are we carrying it? Is it his message? Someone else's message? Or our message? C.T. Studd, one of my favorite missionaries, uh, said this. Real Christians revel in desperate ventures for Christ. Expecting from God great things and attempting the same with exhilaration. I'll read it again. Real Christians revel in desperate ventures for Christ. Expecting great, from God great things and attempting the same with exhilaration. God has chosen you and me, despite how broken we are, to carry his message. Are you, are you ready to carry it? We're going to end with a, a, a final song here. Um, and uh, like I said, there'll be a chance, I'll turn off this microphone here, so I'm not talking. there'll be a chance to do an anointing if you'd like. I'll just stand over here by the tree. If you want to be anointed, come on over and I'll, I'll anoint you. I anoint for the forgiveness of sins, for the strengthening of your faith, for healing of mind and spirit as he, as he desires, and then also that you might grow closer to him than ever before. Because that's all that really matters.
turn me off while I plug in.
Let's pray. Oh, I will remind you, if you did want to be anointed, you just didn't want to wait in line, I'm not going home immediately after the service. You can catch me. Dear God, thank you for the hope there is in you, that you roar. Help us to hear it and help us to respond. A bug just attacked me. And uh, thank you and go before us, Lord. Help us to be your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.